गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन वेलकम टू दुर्गा साफ्ट आईन ट्रैनी वेलकम टू दुर्गा साफ्ट आईन ट्रैनी अंड वेलकम टू को अंड अडवां पैथा वेलकम टू को अंड अडवां पैथा फास्ट ट्रैक बैच so fast track means just classes will be taken with more duration okay we are not compromising with content and myself k prakash babu having almost 15 years of experience as a trainer okay so coming to our course we know very well here we are going to complete core and advanced python we are going to complete core and advanced python the duration of this course is exactly one month one month that means so 30 classes we are going to take to finish this particular course okay now what about the timings of this session means in the demo sessions max i will take one hour like that but once if the sessions got completed demo sessions got completed once if you start your regular classes then i am going to take a 3 to 4:30 okay one and a half hour class will be there so i am mentioning that 3 pm to 4:30 pm and these classes will be there from monday to saturday okay except on sunday in the remaining all days we will have these classes okay then coming to fees for this batch is it is normal normal fees only like uh, rupees 5000 indian currency okay next if i want to register for this to whom we have to contact okay so 720 7212427 you can contact to this or durga soft online training durga soft online training at the rate gmail.com okay so you can contact to this for registration purpose anyway these videos will be uploaded in youtube that youtube url also i will provide in the next class so how many demos will be there means so four to five demos will be there but don't delay if you are interested immediately you can start make payments sir okay so uh, next one sir everything is okay what about the syllabus what we are going to cover so i want to explain this syllabus almost it is having some 20 chapters are there. okay 20 chapters are there let me give this 20 chapters introduction itself so coming to the first first chapter what we are going to discuss here is introduction to python introduction to python in this syllabus in this particular chapter you are going to learn what is mean by python why we need to learn python when compared with uh, other programming languages like we have java is there okay we have c++ is there we have c language is there and we have dot net is there there are n number of programming languages are there when compared with all these programming languages how special python is next and after that if i want to learn python compulsory you need to install the python software and uh, what are the different ways are there for executing the python program and what the tools we are going to use all these things we are going to learn in this introduction okay who invented everything second python fundamentals sir i want to prepare my first python application for example consider you know very well every time whenever we are writing the python program first we will write a plus b that is nothing but addition of two programs how you can able to take two values and how to write the instruction to return the value okay so if i want to prepare these things first we have to get the a value we have to get the b value and we need to write c is equal to a plus b and we have to print the value of c 
like you need to provide sequence of instructions for preparing the sequence of instructions we have to follow certain rules okay that will comes under python fundamentals like identifiers which are special words keywords how to write comments okay everything will comes here so without fundamentals yes we can't learn python so the introduction is very very important then data types in python data types in python see if you take c language how you are going to declare integer value like integer a is equal to 10 even in the java we are going to follow the same style but in python simply you can take c is equal to 30 that's all very simple instruction directly we can take c is equal to 30 sir here we didn't mention what type of data we are going to store yes we are not required to mention the type of the data in advance okay when we are doing the program based on the assignment of values sir what value you have assigned based on that automatically it is going to consider the type here what type of value we have assigned 30 it is integer right so based on that it is going to uh, take the type as integer okay this beautiful nature is there sir if you have such a type of things then what is the need to learn data types very simple it is a predefined but as a programmer you should know right how many types of data types are there how to represent those types of data everything as a programmer we have to understand so for that requirement we are moving to data types in python so after this we are going to talk about input and output statements it is mandatory sir how to read the data from the user how to write the data to the end user so almost uh, for reading only one or two ways are there but for writing we have only one function is there that is a print with uh, 10 forms different different scenarios are there for printing the data in detail we will talk about that next and after that so if i want to perform basic arithmetic operations and logical operations you must have an idea about the operators topic okay next and after that we are going to talk about uh, control flow statements generally the flow of execution in any programming language is sequential means what all the instructions will be executed Are right, sir i want to execute this line so if some condition is satisfied if this condition is not satisfied i don't want to execute this state that means what we have to go for selection statement means i need to select this statement when the condition is true if the condition is false i am not selecting that state uh, something like uh, for example i want to read age of the person if that person is eligible for when if the value of age is greater than or equal to 18 here the condition will become age greater than or equal to 18 these type of statements are selection statements sometimes i want to repeat this statement for 100 times or i want to repeat this statement for 200 times or 20 times so such a type of things are called as a repetition statements or in our terminology we will use a loops so all these things will come under control flow statements okay so if some condition then what statements you have to execute like in detail with the beautiful programming we are going to talk in detail about that control flow statements next and after that see uh, python is a beautiful programming language uh, where inbuilt data structure support is there sir okay inbuilt data structure support is there so in python we have some five data structures are there like string data structure next and after that 
list data structure next and after that tuple data structure next and after that set data structure next and after that dict data structure dictionary data structure like this we have some inbuilt data structures are there. okay we are going to talk in detail about these data structures what uh, what you can call what kind of method support is there from this all these things suppose if you want to find out maximum of uh, some three numbers are there means or four numbers or five numbers simply you can write a function like this because max is the predefined function which is existed like that there are so many predefined functions are there related to these things that part you are going to discuss in detail in this particular course okay so up to this chapter 1 2 okay so chapter chapter 1 to chapter 11 we are going to talk about scripting scripting programming means what just to we will write the programs that's all there is no main method there is nothing will be there but after this we are going to start functional programming functional programming so what is mean by function how you can able to create the functions okay how you can able to work with these functions all these things we are to cover okay after this uh, what is mean by modules and what is mean by packages we are going to cover okay with all these things so i am going to cover a small mini project okay we are going to cover a small mini project with this sir so now here from the chapter number okay from the chapter number 12 to so 14 we are going to talk about functional programming in python then so this is very very important so the next topic what we are going to discuss is nothing but means majority of the people know very well about this object oriented programming concepts so uh, it is going to provide some kind of skeleton okay according to the format you have to write the data if any problem came how you can able to handle that security related information which data is uh, secured data which is not secured how you can able to categorize like n number of things are there all these things we are going to discuss in this okay all these things we are going to discuss in this particular chapter okay so next and after that of course internally around 50 subtopics are there in this whoops 50 subtopics are there in this whoops after completion of this i am going to cover one more small mini project by using object oriented programming so here chapter number okay chapter number 15 to 16 okay we are going to talk about object oriented programming okay next advanced python topics will come okay like what is mean by exception handling exception handling in the sense at runtime errors sir i am executing the program okay i installed i prepared one particular python project i installed that project on client mission that the client is executing that program. suddenly some message he got okay in programmer understandable format okay that the instruction is not understood by uh, what you can call end user sir sir he came up with uh, one request sir so and so problem i am getting but you didn't implemented that concept in the programming or in the coding can you please look into that like that if any request came then anyway we have to solve that by using development team but that is not correct suppose when user is executing if any problem came we should be in a position to handle that for that we have to go for which one exception handling exception handling means what runtime errors how you can able to handle runtime errors next and after that sir i want to talk about uh, multi-threading this is a very very famous nowadays uh, even we are doing multitasking right 
multitasking means what sir doing more than one task at a time okay doing more than one task at a time so here um, sir in the multi threading we can able to execute the instructions parallelly first instruction followed by second instruction followed by third instruction instead of that if the instructions are independent of each other why can't we execute parallelly suppose consider i developed one small project okay i developed one small project where i have databases there so in this database i want to store thousand student details so it is a data entry operation i prepared one small form okay by using gui application so this form i have distributed to students sir first student came so he filled that form he is submitting the request second student filled and third student filled that application so fourth student like how many requests are coming to the database request 1 request 2 request 3 request 4 so first we have to process request 1 and next and after that request 2 next and after that request 3 at last request sir this is not a good programming practice okay if we are getting multiple requests let us execute this request uh, parallelly parallelly because these are independent is this data is going to change any content here no is this data is changing any content here no these are independent there is no relationship between these then no problem you can apply multi threading where if it is taking 5 minutes 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 this total 20 minutes program you can execute within 5 minutes by doing parallelly okay so supporting hardware components we have because you know very well ram capacity so hard disk capacity processor speed all these things are changing daily it is increasing so why can't we provide such a type of support from the programming like in every programming language so almost nowadays we have this multi threading definitely with the multi threading without multi threading you can expect the difference in time also anyway that entire story how to deal, deal with this everything we are going to discuss in detail okay next and after that the next chapter regular expressions it is the beautiful way what we have regular expressions in the sense validation sir if i want to validate anything then almost all the programming languages are using regular expression it is related to the strings it is related to the strings we will prepare one regular expression we will ask the input to move into this regular expression and it will validate whether it is correct or not that doesn't mean that we are verifying the content we are verifying whether the data is in the proper format or not so consider now i have prime video application is there prime video application is there so i have uh, i have already registered for this now in the database crores of mobile numbers are registered now i am asking the user are a user can you please enter your mobile number so that i will check and i will send to otp sir user is giving mobile number as 123 taking this mobile number searching in the database for one crore data is not correct programming practice because we know by seeing this itself it is not a mobile number so while giving let us do a validation program it will take the input if it is valid it will provide that data to database if it is invalid let us give some information for this we have to go for regular expression it is language independent concept in java we have regular expression in python we have regular expression like we have so even some application i want to show you here you can able to see we are going to talk about these things so here you can see uh implement a program okay to validate mobile number to validate a gmail id to validate a student university hall ticket number to validate a bike registration number to validate a given date and even to validate atm pin all these things are related to the 
regular expression related programs okay regular expression related programs of course it is in java but in python how we can able to deal we are going to talk okay next even in this regular expression we are going to see web scrapping web scrapping means what extracting extracting data from files extracting the data from websites how you can able to extract that part we are going to discuss okay next and after that so with the help of these i am going to cover a small mini project so next and after that we are going to talk about uh, file handling file handling so how to create a file how to read data from the file how to write data to the file okay how to deal with excel files how to deal with image files how to deal with uh, uh, what you can call csv files everything we are going to discuss in this okay next and after that sir here as a part of database i am going to talk about the mysql database that's why i am going to provide the basics of mysql like how to install mysql software so how to work with the basic commands like creating the table okay inserting the data reading the data that is retrieving updating the data inserting the data like all the mysql related so things we are going to discuss here next and after that we are going to talk about uh, pdbc pdbc means what python database connectivity okay python database connectivity how to establish the connection how to establish the connection we are going to discuss here so at last uh, we will close with one small mini project so so here from chapter number so 17 to chapter number 25 which deals with advanced python okay remaining all the things are nothing but i can say so score python this is nothing but what is the syllabus that we are going to discuss okay so maybe you people may have a doubt sir this much syllabus is it sufficient within 30 classes that means 30 into 1 and 1/2 hour almost 45 hours is it sufficient yes sir more than sufficient because so my teaching will be very clear for you people to understand and slowly i will try to inject the concept once if you are trying to understand these fundamentals very clearly rest of the things will become very easy sir don't worry at all so in the first day i am going to use one word so python okay so python is very 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 easy programming language okay even you can enjoy this uh, while learning the python also trust me okay this is nothing but what is the uh, introduction to our course and about myself everything sir can you please confirm if you are having any queries i will clarify your queries at least one or two programs i will execute can you please confirm up to this do you have any doubts friends yes if you are having any queries please let me know if no queries acknowledge me in the chat window yes feel free to ask doubts clear uh will we have a working session on any questions might we have end date of the course will be second feb no 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 first week of feb okay hamit first week of feb so meanwhile we will have holidays right sundays and uh, i think uh, uh, pongal festival is there okay uh, maybe another one day may be cancelled so two extra days and uh, one two three four sundays will be gone four or five sundays excluding that max february first week we will maintain 
working session in the sense that means so we are going to practice the assignment questions also i will give some programs also so once if our session got completed on that particular topic so i am going to give some uh, questions you need to practice if you are having any queries anyway we will create whatsapp group through that we can communicate how we are gonna clear your doubts see once if you are uh, uh, attending the session after completion of this you can watch the video right so again if you are getting a queries then you can put it that queries in the whatsapp group or you can uh, ask in the next immediate class okay and this running notes i am going to share for you people via google drive and videos also will be shared for you people via google drive videos will have seven months duration but this running notes whatever i am going to share is a lifetime validity okay uh michelle once if the class is regularized then we will create a whatsapp group okay okay sir. so hope all your doubts got clarified uh you gonna help us with certification and interview questions yes definitely see when you are perfect in the content maybe one or two doubts you will get but max will be covered in our regular class itself right so i am starting the class sir okay in this first of all i want to talk about um, history of python okay i am going to talk about the history of python so that is the first chapter introduction to python complete python introduction i am going to cover but before moving to this introduction so i told very beginning python is very very easy programming language for that i want to show you some proofs okay i want to show you some proof that really whether our python is easy or sir here in c drive already i have one test.py program is there see python files will have dot py as a extension as of now try to remember these two things so the name of the file you can give any name but a dot py is mandatory in general i will take um, so test dot py as a file so to run the file from the command prompt you have to type py space file name dot py so because it is a demo session anyway in the installation process i will explain in detail but as of now remember you have to take py command test.py test is nothing but the file name. file name here you can see test.py is the file name. okay just we have to use this so try to understand this anyway in the installation i will explain then i want to write a simple program like a print of so hello print of hello that's all sir you have not written any main method not required because in the introduction itself i told python is providing scripting if you want you can prepare function if you want you can prepare the classes everything is possible just i am going to print this within double quotations okay like within print statement within double quotations if you take hello that hello message will be printed on my screen sir what about semicolon semicolon is also not required okay so i think the biggest problem what we are facing in our any programming language i think you know very well semicolon is nothing but the biggest headache for every programmer this is one second one is sir opening and closing brackets right so suppose if you have three open brackets three closing brackets some people may open all the three brackets some people may close all the three brackets sometimes you are going to open like this and you are going to close sir always it is a bigger question mark for the programs of course if you are not following the proper syntax so almost 90% of the students will get this kind of doubts so if you misplace these brackets what will happen that's all the entire logic is going to be gone 
that's why luckily these statements are gone we don't have this semicolon and flower brackets in our python but to overcome that semicolon they have not replaced with anything but this one is replaced with the indentation indentation in detail about this we will discuss in our upcoming classes okay so print of just hello is sufficient i want to run this code sir how to run we have to open the command prompt so here you have to move to the folder where you have saved the programs i have saved the programs in 3 pm folder okay so just i entered into this 3 pm now you have to type the commands here sir what command i told py space test dot py that's all it is going to print hello message sir can i take in single quotation some people may have a doubt in this yes you can take a single quotation also no problem python is not going to provide support for characters so characters and strings are same so that means you can create a string by using single quotation or you can create a string by using double quotation even triple quotation concept is also there that part we will discuss in very few sessions okay so i hope the first program execution i think it is clear sir when i am doing the programming every time my teacher is asking can you please find factorial of the given number because this program is going to give impact for so many programs in the future like that there is a concept sir can i write a python program to calculate a factorial yes but uh, why you are taking risk myself is having so many libraries are there me again and again what is the need to calculate factorial so i have one library is there with name math just import that library just import that library then just we can able to call math dot factorial of 5 sir it is going to find out 5 factorial and it will return the result can i execute this yes what output we are getting 120 120 is the factorial for 5 so if i want to develop the same program in other programming languages we have to write a big code sir okay we have to write a big code like you need to declare factorial you have to take n consider n value is equal to 5 so for i is equal to 1 okay i less than or equal to n i plus plus you have to take f is equal to f into i okay and later so you have to print that result this is the java program like this you have to take so if i compile the code java c test dot java the code will work so maybe this file is not there properly okay it is it is located in somewhere i will save this in 3 pm now if i compile the code so the program compiles fine and if you execute we are getting even in the python also it is working sir what is the difference here we have written the code manually but here we have used predefined functional immediately you people may have a doubt sir which one is the best according to myself this one is the best because in this we are learning internally how we are going to calculate but here we have a ready made method is there but if you want we will we will learn how to calculate a factorial without using predefined functions also but in the real time which is best this one or this one this one is the best and one more difference sir if i am giving number as a 10 is my java is going to calculate a 10 factorial perfectly working sir i am giving 100 is it is it providing support for 100 no have you observed we are getting some illegal result there is a problem but can i calculate 100 factorial here yes no problem you can calculate you will get the result sir this is a single number only this is a single number only. sir this much number how it is holding because everything in python is treated as an object 
everything in python is treated as an object that's why it is working fine sir okay so i hope you people got very clear clarity here we don't have any size such a type of things i think this one simple example has given more confidence for you people which shows that python is very easy okay so like we have so many libraries are there sir. okay so is it possible to without importing library can we get the result no we shall because a library means what somewhere it is located we have to give that path without that where it will search for factorial okay compulsory that linkage must be done by ourselves okay so i hope you people got clarity sir uh, which shows that a python is a very simple can you please confirm do you have any doubts in this small code everyone please confirm clear right very good very good now so one more example i want to take for you people sir what is that example here is are sir can you please print okay can you please print um current month calendar so for that they have provided one special module called calendar just you can print calendar dot month of which month you required okay which month you required 2023 comma 1 that means in 2023 first month calendar it is going to print sir january month calendar it is print so how beautiful it is if you want to implement this by our own it is very complex but of course with this we won't get any benefit just i am telling there is one utility that's all okay how simple program it is to display the current month calendar so not only current if you provide that month number it will return sir can i get the complete year calendar yes no problem you can print calendar of 2023 which will print that entire year calendar you can see okay you can see sir is it coming the total 2023 calendar it got displayed okay like this we can prepare sir just of course a simple example beyond that nothing i want to print a current date and time is it possible to print a current date and time yes for this also we have predefined modules are there like we have time and you can print yes time dot um, s t r e f time of course don't talk don't ask in detail i want to print the date percentage d hyphen percentage m hyphen percentage year will print the date in this format so 21 if i want to print her time so percentage h colon percentage m colon percentage s okay sir it is going to print time 15 46 47 sir it is printing in 12, 24 hours format if you want a 12 hours format like this 346 56 seconds okay 47 i want am pm also for that you can take percentage all these are notations what we have okay anyway in detail about this we are going to discuss later okay now i hope you people got some idea about how easy python is okay all these are nothing but libraries python means i can say libraries so rich set of libraries are there in python okay so that we can enjoy each and every flavor of python okay what is the difference between library and module sir modules is called as library library means predefined storage modules packages everything will come under library okay we, we shall right sir any doubts up to this are you feeling any difficulty 
is everything is fine please confirm is it clear for everyone yes sir good good how to install python don't worry don't worry i will i will explain maybe in the next one or two sessions you can expect that yeah yeah definitely step by step process i will explain don't worry okay right so now i want to talk about introduction to python are sir who introduced this python for us because it is very easy who introduced python for us can you please tell me the story of this python yes so this python was introduced by gudio van rosam gudio van rosam so he is the founder of python founder of python sir when he is working for a math project when he is working for a mathematical project he need some calculation he need some calculation for that he searched for so many programming languages but those programming languages are not providing the accurate result so for that he developed he developed so own scripting language own scripting language which is providing support for that calculation later so he used that tool and he developed programming language from that to solve majority major math problems okay the main intention for introducing this python is to solve math problems in an efficient manner okay suppose if you take multiplication of two matrices in other programming languages a big code we have to write if you want to calculate a uh, matrix multiplication but in python only one line code is sufficient okay so that much easiness is there okay so math means python python means math but don't feel math is a difficult so python is difficult no it is providing easiest solutions okay so next and after that next and after that sir when it has been introduced so 21st february okay 21st february 1991 is the date of birth official date of birth of python the first version of python came into the market in 21st february 1991 so before java only python came okay but python boom is uh, almost nowadays from the past 4 years python is rocking like anything but initially python came no one recognized that python okay sir we have online support is there we have so much of uh, uh, online platforms are there but before ott is sorry before corona so we don't know anything about that but after corona everyone is trying to use this online related platforms right in the same way this python came into the light uh, so after almost this uh, before 4 uh, years 5 years that's all and this python is existed in various versions okay like uh, we have python 1.x is there which is utter flap so no one is going to use this first version of python so they came up with a renovation so they have do modifications on this python 1.x they have removed some concepts they have added some new technologies so with that they have developed 2.x it is also almost flop sir then they have deleted everything from python 2.x they came up with a new syntax new rules easiness in 3.x which is nothing but current python version. so even you can't expect further versions because the 3.x is the stable version so here we have so many updates are there but these two are failure versions okay and moreover like other programming languages we can't execute python in 3.x because syntactically that is a complete change is there we can say python 1.x is a different 
programming language 3.x is the different programming language okay next so next point in the introduction so python is so very very easy programming language i told several times so when compared with when compared with other languages when compared with other languages python is very easy so. and the main application the main application areas of python is already i told math so that's why in the data science applications uh, okay so data analysis applications everywhere we are using python sir what are the application areas application areas of python can you please list out at least some names yes so we have machine learning machine learning it is we are using python artificial intelligence okay artificial intelligence in this we are using python and um, data science we are using python nowadays even for web applications we can use python so even for desktop applications we can prepare python and even for distributed applications we prepare python and even in the gaming domain we can use python okay so even in the data analysis part also we are using python so much of application areas are there and if you want to believe me so which companies are using python there are n number of companies are there sir nowadays every company they are trying to use at least one piece of code also from python so python is best in searching technique okay so even you can see suppose consider i have uh, a big data is there here i want to search for a small quantity then so no need to write a big logic simply we have in not in operators are there so which are implemented very efficiently for checking purpose so the almost top companies are using this python sir google is using python youtube for their search operations they are implemented by using this python and even we have nasa okay so even dropbox okay next and after that netflix ott medium okay so etc these are nothing but the top companies which are using python if you want to just have a look once just i will show you a practical proof for you so which companies are using python you can see in the images we are getting top companies top companies have you observed here these are the top companies which are using in python okay you can see so netflix jp morgan nasa youtube okay facebook okay red hot linux glassdoor nokia amazon uh, instagram spotify yahoo hike okay messengers like we have so many companies ibm google everywhere we are using python okay so i hope the introduction still we have some topics are there but i think it is very clear for you people up to this whatever i have covered can you please confirm any doubts up to this can you please confirm any doubts up to this everyone please respond okay now so next we will continue the remaining things in the tomorrow's session so tomorrow i am going to explain softwares required softwares required to execute python applications sir if i want to execute python applications what softwares are required and what is the python official website is there then so in detail about the uh, python versions we are going to cover next and after that installation okay so installation of uh, python we are going to see next and after that 
steps to prepare steps to prepare so our first python application how it will be we are going to explain in detail okay next and after that i want to cover one small mini project at very beginning itself what is that mini project is very simple sir i want to perform addition of two numbers very simple right then i want to perform addition of two numbers addition of two numbers okay so until user enters no until user enters i don't want to perform till that can you please repeat like this we can now so addition of numbers okay i am going to take addition of numbers so write the results and write the result in a text file addition.txt file i want to take and i want to write the data in this next i want to write addition of numbers program and write the result write the result in both so text files okay uh, so write the result in database i want to write the result in data and uh, i want to do the same program addition of numbers and uh, write the result in file in the file okay in the database and in the console that means screen so this is small mini project of course somewhat confusion will be there but i will try to make it easy for you people okay so this is nothing but our tomorrow's agenda in detail we are going to talk about tomorrow about this one sir okay so you can attend the same link by using this link you can join still two to three more days okay and the people who are interested to continue you can start registering by today itself by paying the fee this is nothing but information about this okay right mm, every time uh yeah this class is common this is 3 to 4 30 pm class will be there so these classes will be there from 3 to 4 30 3 to 4 30 these classes will be there okay right